Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. Today's video is going to be how to approach the clear coat on newer vehicles when it comes to correction and just overall perfecting that paint before laying down protection. Here I'm taking measurements of the thickness of all three layers, primer, base coat, clear coat. Normally, if I would have walked around a Ford pickup truck four or five years ago, we would have got an average of about 5.4. And now you can see just how little of the material, all three layers, primer, base coat, and clear coat, they're giving us on these vehicles. I'm going to be demonstrating on this panel, and this panel represents soft, thin clear coat. And the scratches on here also represent running the car through a tunnel wash repeatedly. This is the same type of damage you're going to see if you use the shop light. And as we measure, we're going to get about the same amount of clear uh, primer and base coat as we did on the truck, just a little bit less. Uh, I work on this panel frequently, so we took it down a little bit, but the clear on this panel is soft and it's thin and it's also water-based and we're going to talk about the newer water-based and that we should have two mils of clear on top of color coat to protect it the manufacturers are failing to give us that much so we really have to be careful when we approach uh, a vehicle and do correction i'm going to show you a couple different combinations and teams to turn around and perfect that clear coat on a new car without removing a ton of clear this is the first combination i'm going to even give you a couple uh, measurements of gloss on this panel not impressive in the 80s in some areas in the 70s and we're going to turn that around try and get it to the mid 90s or maybe even higher and that's without laying protection down just with the correction process our first combination is going to be a bit harsh even for this type of clear coat. So the Your Fiber Pad and Turtle Wax uh, One and Done is going to be the most aggressive I'll get on some of the newer clear coats out there, especially the soft ones. A few drops on the pad and we're going to get to work. I'm going to run a path through uh, one of the worst areas on the store and I'll show you the improvement that we can make. Let's get back to water-based clear coat that I mentioned earlier. Um, back in the day when there weren't heavy regulations, uh, polyurethane paints were very popular, but they were dependent on solvents to get it from the can to the panel. And about 75% of those solvents would evaporate into the air, and the EPA standards now cut that back to 50%. So companies are now just switching over to water-based clears, which are now acrylic paints. They need uh, just water, to get them to adhere to the product from the can and the only drawback from that is cure time uh, it takes a lot more time for the clear to cure than if it was a polyurethane with solvents as the base hope that makes sense i just wanted to give you a background of what's happening to the clear coat Another thing to add, the polyurethanes then also needed hardeners and other additives that were harsh chemicals and which the acrylic uh, paints and clears do not need so they're much safer and release a lot less of the solvent into the air as it evaporates all right so we have this little swath cleared off from the panel and i'll show you the difference now you can go a little bit further without removing a ton of clear and that's by using uh just putting a finish pad on the polisher or even switching uh, the pad and the correction fluid to something lighter that'll bring out more clarity and, and really give you the best gloss um, and reflection before adding protection. Let me give you another combination that would work. Uh, we'll go to 3D1 and we'll go to the Lake Country Orange. This is like a mediocre pad here. It cuts, but it's more like a harsh polishing pad. All these different combinations and teams that I'm showing you will give you options when it comes to perfecting or correcting clear coat on newer vehicles, either if it's your own car, you're an enthusiast, or if you do this for a living uh, and a customer brings one to you. That's going to do it. Let me remove the residue. I'll grab you guys in, uh, bring you into a good angle with the shop light, and you'll see the difference we made. And just the guys, this didn't take long at all. Just one 
uh, pass, two passes, and you'll be able to make um, immense strides, depending if you pick the right combination of pad and correction fluid. Keep in mind, this panel is trashed. It's why it's not on the car anymore. So there are going to be some very deep imperfections we can't go after that are either too deep into the clear or through the clear coat. Here is another combination, flawless, and a Max Shine pad here. This is just a, a polishing pad, and we're going to make yet another path through this mess. Improper wash technique, repeatedly running through a tunnel wash, improper drying technique. There are many things that can factor into why your car could have imperfections, the spider webbing or the scratches or the love marks, whatever you want to call them. But these are going to be teams and, and different combinations of the, how to get rid of those uh, unsightly marks from your clear coat with hardly removing anything. We will take some more measurements at the end of both uh, paint depth and also gloss to show you the difference that we've made without hardly doing any damage any more damage to the clear you have to keep in mind what we're doing here is removing scratches with scratches it's harsh to think about but um, you know with the polishes the fine polishes that we have out there we're finishing down to where those scratches cannot be picked up from the eye and the finish looks glossy like that uh, and you can really go crazy jeweling and really finishing down but it's that's completely up to you as to how far you want to go okay let me finish correcting the uh, entire door now uh, I gave you a few examples and teams and combinations that can get the job done those are some of the best teams you're gonna find uh, that are available out there uh, that are also safe for the clear coat uh, so I'm gonna go back to the first or original combination that we used, and then I'll finish up with finale that I showed you there a little bit earlier and a soft polishing pad or finish pad or even an application pad would work and that's gonna bring out the best clarity uh, gloss and reflection from the panel before laying down protection but before we lay down protection we'll get some measurements and we'll show you the improvement that we made uh, with really uh, giving a lot of care to the clear coat leaving a lot of it behind hardly removing uh, any at all and that is the goal that's the goal you want to have when it comes to the clear coat finishes on newer vehicles turning them around quickly keeping the heat down and not removing a ton of material by the way when I stopped when I paused to show you the polisher I was showing you the speed that it's on I often get asked what speed I run the polishers I'm never blazing the polisher at the high speeds. I'm always between the third and the fourth setting. The pressure on the polisher is going to be moderate, um, maybe similar to a firm handshake, if that makes sense. But you don't want to put a ton of pressure on the polisher down onto the panel. It doesn't matter if you're using a dual action polisher or a rotary. All that does is increase heat, increase heat on the backing plate, your polisher, on the panel, and the clear coat, something you want to avoid. And after a uh, nice, quick, um, two-pass uh, crisscross pattern on this panel, we have it looking decent. The only thing left are these deep marks through the clear. And we actually even improved them. If you back away, you can barely see them. An extra step you can safely add on is the jeweling or just bringing out extra clarity from the correction process using Finale from Extreme Solutions and an application pad. And there you go. The slight haze is gone. It really brought out the clarity. The reflections off of the panel are nice and crisp, and that's what you're looking for. From there, you can protect and have an incredible panel. And you can see the difference we made from the beginning of the video to now. Let's put some numbers behind what we're seeing. We started in the 70s and 80s, and now, before protection, this is where we're at. All of that done with hardly any change in the paint depth readings throughout the panel that we did at the beginning of the video. Now, very important, after that correction is done, you want something substantial to protect it with a polymer or acrylic sealant, uh, ceramic, titanium or graphene or metal oxide, 
something that can build up on the top of that clear coat layer. Uh, I know you guys love wax. There's a lot of wax users out there. Wax is not dead, but wax does not last long if unless it's a Montan wax. I actually have some T1 Carnuba here, and I thought just for um, giggles, and you know what, we can put it under a microscope, and uh, I can show you guys what it looks like in its raw form. Really interesting. I love geeking out on this stuff, but yeah, anyways, unless it's a Montana wax, which is extracted from brown coal and only found in veins in California and the Middle East, and it's expensive, it's not going to last long. So put something substantial on your car. Use those combinations I just showed you to correct it and you're going to be in good shape for years to come. Brian from Apex Detail, I hope that helps. If not, you can join our forum or our group on Facebook. It's the Apex Detail support group where we help each other. You can ask any question. Just tag me there on that platform, and I'll get back to you. Love you all. Catch you in the next video.